בוא ישראל יקרים We're dedicating the shiur Bezrat Hashem to the Atzlacha and the Pidyon of Yaakov Naftali ben Rachel, Gilad Michael ben Bat Galim, Eyal ben Iris Teshura, Refuat, Kvod Moreno ורבנו, Rav Shalom Arush ben Yamna. Bezrat Hashem. Refuat, David Yehuda ben Shatana. So, Bezrat Hashem. תורה ל"ו, פרט ה', וכשבא להתגלות התורה, and when a person starts to taste a little bit from the sweetness, the taste of the Torah הקדושה, there are two things in the Torah הקדושה, when a person, he knows that to learn Torah הקדושה, it's good for him, there is two things, there are two things, one is that It distracts his thoughts from from the regular life that he used to live. So it's a good thing. It helps him to to relax. He learns to write, forget everything. The other thing is a lot higher than that. That actually he's dipping in the water of the Torah. He's been purified by the Torah Kedusha. Means if a person goes to a swimming pool or something for an hour. So he also can distract his thoughts from everything and he's going to do good. But if after that hour he's going to go back home and he's going to have a fight with his wife, so the hour in the pool actually didn't do no good. He will not going to remember the swimming pool after one hour in the fire. Can understand? But after one hour in the Torah Kedusha, if he comes home it gives him more power. Also that, if he learns Torah right. Like that we said, Zachana set lo sam chayim, lo Zachana set lo sam avet. If the person purified himself and learned Torah like he should learn, means connected to the one that gives him the Torah, means that he learns with humility, means that he learns lishma. So by that, the Torah going to give him the power to do tshuva. This is what that we're saying. Hashivenu avinu letoratecha. Our Father, bring us back to your Torah. We're not saying teach us your Torah. Lamdenu toratecha. We're saying Hashivenu letoratecha. Bring us back means to do tshuva. Means to Torah with tshuva. Torah without tshuva is arrogant, and that is a person that his Torah becomes to be poison for him when he's learning because he's learning and he's not doing tshuva. He's not doing tshuva, so adraba the svivav nisara meod. Everyone that surrounds Hashem itbarach is inside of a storm. That storm. Is uh, what the Takadosh Baruch Hu medakdek with the righteous people, with the tzaddikim, the ones that are closest to, closest to him. He's more medakdek. There are more judgments on them. So Adraba, the fact that you learn Torah can damage the person. The fact that he knows so much and he's not keeping, so there are more complaints on him, more problems. Adraba. So this is why the Gemara is bringing two opinions: one that it's the most important thing to live close to your rabbi. And a second opinion, that it's better to live far away. So, why we have two opinions? If you listen to your rabbi, it's very go good to live close to him. Because you follow his... Uh, obeys mitzvot. Obeys advice. Advice. How you say Advice. If someone is obeying someone, so he's mitzvoto. So, how you say mitzvot? Tzivuim. Commands, wonderful. And if a person is not listening to his rabbi, so the complaint just grow every day, every day, every day. Once I remember that Rav Shalom said that this is the reason why a lot of why a lot of students that left the yeshiva, we saw that they fell very, very low, very dangerous situation, mamash. So why? Because you had everything in your hands. So there is a huge complaint on a person. Why you leave after you had something so huge in your hands? So. Where are you going to? What are you going to do now? So, you can understand that. So, when the person starts to taste from that taste of the Torah, that he feels, he sees the good that there is in the Torah Kedusha, he reveals the light of the Torah. So then become, from that revealing, new souls. Look what a person can do in his life. And if you don't believe in it, so you have a problem, you don't have faith. But every word of the Torah Kedoshah is truth. 
Rabbeinu is saying that by that you're learning and finding yourself in the Limuda Torah, you find the greatness of the Torah, the goodness of the Torah, you see good, you see light inside the Torah, by that you create you. Create new souls. Who are you? We don't know. You don't know who you are. You don't know what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is doing with you every day, every moment, every time you say Shakol Nea Bidvaro, Bore Mine Mezonot, Bore Peria Etz, Bore Mine Besamim. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. By saying the Bracha, you give power to the angel, that that angel, he's in charge of that kind of fruit section in the world. You give him power with your Brachot. So who are you? You're in charge of the angels. You don't understand it, you don't have the brain to see that now, you're distracted. But if you're going to concentrate, one day you're going to be able also to see that, to see what you're doing. You give power to trees to grow, to flowers to grow, to animals to run in the fields. Rabbeinu is saying in Likutei Moran that when a person is keeping mitzvah sukkah like he should, by that he gives power to animals not to be sick and not to die in weird ways all year long. By keeping mitzvah sukkah like we should. By that that you enter into the sukkah, and in the time of sukkot you're not outside of the sukkah, you're just inside the sukkah, you give the animals bounty, shefa. That they're going to have health, that they're going to have food, that they're going to have everything that they need, place to hide in the winter, whatever. You have that power by keeping mitzvah sukkah in sukkot. How much every person have to realize, if a kadosh baruch Hu, is investing so much in me, so who am I? This is what the Rabbi Akiva said, Kol Adam Chayav Lomar, Kol Haolam Kulo Lo Nivra Ela Bishvili, just for me. Who am I? Who am I that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for me? You make bracha on a certain vegetable, on a certain fruit, on, on a cucumber in Shabbos. You know how many worlds been moved, how many people were running, how many things happened. I told you that once already. How many people woke up in the middle of the, on the, of the night and, 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 and drove on their trucks to the factory, to, to how many farmers, people were working, seeding and, 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 and harvesting the, those fruits and, and, and iron factories and people working and publish and, and, and publicity to, to sell all of those products and, and the supermarket that is selling those cucumbers and, all of those people waking up in the middle of the night and fighting with their wives. I have to go to work, you don't know why, why you haven't made my sandwich. And he's driving with his black coffee in the middle of the night, working hard. Just that you're going to be able to say, And last time that I told you that, I told you that in Shabbos when you eat that cucumber with the kugel, you don't even say, because it's tafel to the kugel that you said, mezonot on it. But this is how much you're important. This is how much you are important to the Creator, to the one that created you. This is how much each and every one of us important. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu is establishing all of this world to be awake, to run, to fight, to do whatever. That you're going to have clean shirts, that you're going to have pants, that you're going to have sneakers, shoes, kippot, that you're going to have tables. You're going to have internet, that you're going to have television, that you're going to have whatever you need to your Avodat Hashem. I'm not kidding. One day all of it is going to belong to us. Going to be belong to us. One day all of the communication ways going to be belong to Am Yisrael. They're all going to be ours. It's all going to be ours. For what they've been created for. To show people running after a basketball, after... Um, a ball running like crazy. Not for that. It cannot be. Kadosh Baruch Hu said that He created all of the world for us, for Am Yisrael. So now all of that bounty is still in the exile, still in the galut, still in the hands of the ones that's, that lies, that things belongs to them, that they're claiming that the Shefa belongs to them. But actually all of the Shefa, all of the bounty is coming down because of us. And Jews that live outside of Eretz Israel, they're bringing the Shefa outside of Eretz Israel. And if the Jews are going to come to live in Eretz Israel, they're going to bring the Shefa down to Eretz Israel. 
And everyone that is coming to Eretz Israel, you can see in the history, everyone a little bit read, read books and he sees what's going on here. 100 years ago there was nothing here. Nothing. 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 Look. It's one of the most developed lands in the world. And it's 100 years. 100 years. What's going on? No place developed like that in 100 years. And if you're going to say that there is one place that also developed very fast, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, I'm sorry to tell you, thousands of Jews were there in the beginning of that process. In the United States, the thousands of Jews started. We're running over there in the government, we're running in politics, we're running investing money, finding gold, whatever you want, bringing slaves, whatever. They were doing everything. No, no slaves. Amen. The, the what? The Arabs, the Arabs were doing that. The Arabs. I don't know. I know Jews, Baruch Hashem. They have a huge Yetzirah. <laughs> don't. Uh, okay. Amen. I know Jews have a Yetzirah, Baruch Hashem. Kol HaGadol Mechavero Yitzro Gadol Mimeno. Jews were inside of a lot of filthy places, Baruch Hashem. We're doing tshuva. We're hoping for Hashem it Barach. We're not cleaning ourselves to say that we're totally clean, that we haven't done, we know, Baruch Hashem. The Torah is revealing the mistakes of Abraham, reveals the mistakes. There is only one in the world that haven't sinned. Never. Never sinned. He born by Ruach HaKodesh. Only one. Jews are not like that. Jews, they mistake. Even David HaMelech mistake. Who? JC. He never sinned in his life, no? The truth is that the Torah is saying, En tzadik ba'aretz asher There is no righteous man that can live all of his life and not to sin. Everyone have his mistakes, everyone have his failures, everyone have his downs. And we need to know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is waiting for us, always. Always waits. He loves us and He wants to give us. He wants to help us to develop, to grow, to each and every one of us. And every one of us have to understand what it means to believe in yourself. To believe in yourself, it means to believe that HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves you. And if now you want to do something for Hashem Barach, there is no way in the world that Hashem will not going to help you to do that. If you want things for yourself and you're not asking Hashem, alright, Hashem's God, the free choice to choose if to give you or not. Because I call Beide Shamaim. But except of Yirat Shamaim, because Yirat Shamaim, if you're doing something for Yirat Shamaim, because you're Yere Shamaim, it's not in the hands of Hashem if to give you or not. Hashem made covenant, made Brit with Am Yisrael. This is it. If you're serving me, you have it all. Hashem wrote it in the Torah Akdosha. Vayayim Shamoa, Tishmeu, if you're going to listen to me, and you're going to do whatever I'm commanding you, you're going to have bounty, you're going to have it all. You're going to have Shefa to you, to your animals, to your Yetzirah, to whatever. Everyone going to have the Shefa. No one going to lack of nothing. When you listen to the voice of Hashem, and Hashem is asking, what am I asking you? Kim ah, Just to be afraid of me means to believe in me, to have faith. This is the only thing that Hashem is asking. Not that you're going to put Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam, and not that you're going to wake up to pray in the Netzach Hama, and not that you're going to stand up in the Chatzot in the middle of the night to the Tikkun Chatzot. All of those things are wonderful, but it's not what that Hashem is asking. Hashem is asking that you're going to want. Hashem is asking that you're going to believe. Hashem is asking that if it, you're failing, that you're going to judge yourself. This is Yerash Hamaim. Yerash Hamaim is a person that judges himself every day of his life. Because he's... He, he's, he's counting Hashem it Barach. If you're not judging yourself, means you're not counting Hashem. You don't care. All right. So he said that I need to pray in a minyan, and I haven't. And all right, I'm not counting. I don't care. But if every day you're coming to Hashem it Barach and you say, "Rebbeinu Shalom, Hashem, I'm sorry. Today I wasn't in Beit Knesset in the morning, and um, tomorrow you're going to say, Rebbeinu Shalom, I'm sorry. Chas Shalom, I wasn't in the mikveh. And the third day, Hashem, I'm sorry. Today I rebuked my wife. I'm sorry, Hashem. So you're counting Hashem. So Hashem is important to you. You're judging yourself. You're apologizing. And even on the stupidest things of them all, you don't know how much Yetzirah you have. 
And from how much Yetzirah you have, you need to understand your importance, your greatness. Adraba, Yetzirah is fighting so much on you. So much I'm important to Hashem Itbarach that Yetzirah doesn't let me do nothing in Avodat Hashem. I'm so important. I'm so important that I cannot learn because my limud is going to be so important to Hashem Itbarach, going to satisfy Hashem so much that He doesn't let me learn. My limud is so precious to Hashem that Yetzirah doesn't let it happen. This is right eyes, straight eyes, good eyes. Eyes, logic, straight eyes, good eyes. Eyes that are not twisted by lies and, 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 and lashonara on you. Like you're bad, like you're mean, like you're evil, like Hashem doesn't want your Torah. Can you say something worse than that on Hashem Barach? That Hashem doesn't want your Torah, that Hashem doesn't care from your, on your Torah, that you're going to learn, that Hashem doesn't let you learn. Adraba. Hashem Himself is in the exile. Hashem Himself is in the Galut. Hashem is between the people. Hashem is suffering. The sorrow of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is harder, is bigger than ours. We don't feel. We have all of our stupid lust and desires that distract our thoughts from the distance that we have from Hashem. But Hashem that is 100% pure, He feels every, every, every pain, every sorrow of every Jew. Like the Rabbi Milubavitch said, that he feels the, 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 the sorrow of every Jew that, that goes one step down. So if the Rabbi Milubavitch can feel it and, and suffering from it so much, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, from whom Moshe Rabbeinu learned his humility, his Ahavat Israel, from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You look at your Rabbi, you learn from your Rabbi. You see your Rabbi running from Israel to save their lives, you understand, hey, I'm running all day long after my nonsense and I see my rabbi not asleep and always doing things so I'm going to learn on the importance of those things. You see, you see he's always smiling to everyone, you see he's always helping everyone, you see he's doing huge things so you wake up, you say, hey, come on, how many hours I can be busy with my nonsense, I'm going to wake up on myself, it's about time. So you start to dedicate half an hour every day on Am Yisrael and then an hour and then you start also learn Chavruta and then you grow and then suddenly one day you look back and you say, Hey Baruch Hashem, I'm deep inside. Hashem helped me very much. And this is how you grow. And people are looking at you and you don't know how many students you already have. You don't know how many people are waking up because of your acts. Because of your actions you can never imagine sees you every day going to the mikveh, that you don't ask questions on mikveh, that you go daily. And if you're late one day and you say, hey, is there a mikveh open after 11? Is there is a mikveh papa open every day until 1 o'clock? And again, from 2, from 3, from 5, so you say, all right, I have to catch that mikveh. You don't know, maybe by that you asked, is there a mikveh that is open close to 1, close to 2, close to 3? By asking, you woke up someone else to say, hey, if he is going, even at one, if he forgot to the mikveh, me that I have a mikveh so close under my house and I'm not going, maybe I'm going to start going. And he's going to go. And he's your student. And all of the days that he's going to dip in the mikveh, it's your mitzvot. And like that we learn, those are complete mitzvot. Not like your mikveh. You're dipping and you have all of your nonsense. You also go to shower, also go to change your clothes, also go to, to, to run away from, from your obligations. I don't know what. But when you woke up someone else to go to the mikveh, you woke him up, you want him to do the mikveh in 100% purity. That all of his mikveh is going to be Shem Shamayim. So it counts for you, even though that he also got those foreign thoughts when he's going to the mikveh. But for you it counts like he's dipping in perfect dip, dips in the mikveh, and his mikveh is rising for you like you dipped in, in purity. 100% lishma. And if you wake up a person to learn Torah, and then he sits six hours and eight hours a day, and if you have 20 people like those, and if you have hundreds, so what's going on every day with you? And if people are waking up to do a fatza, mm. what a person can achieve? What a person can achieve in this world? I said it now to my friend Yochanan, I told him, look, if a person going to give one million dollar, all right, one million dollars sounds a lot of money. There are people that for them one million dollars, it's nothing. There are people that for them one million dollar, it's a dream that they cannot even believe that one day Kadosh Baruch Hu can give it to them. But there are people, there are few, right? Few thousands. 
people that have that amount that for them it's nothing if you're going to take one million dollars and you're going to buy books of Rav Shalom in that amount of money and just hand those books how many books you're going to buy 20 shekels they're going to sell you every book how many books you have two million books right almost two million books I'm sorry, how much? Half a million books, 250 books. I made that mistake also with Yohanan before. Half a million books. Half a million books you're going to have. You take half a million books and hand them to Am Israel. We're talking dollars and you're buying in shekels. It's not a problem. Wonderful. You give those books to people. You have thousands on thousands of people that are waking up on their lives to do tshuva. You have thousands on thousands of people that waking up to do tshuva, to learn Torah, to go to the mikveh, to do one hour it but to do it every day. Thousands of people. And for you it's something that wasn't heavy at all. There are people that on their vacations that are spending those amounts of money easily. On cars, you have 30 of them, 50 of them. And you don't need more than one person that one day gonna wake up. You need one person that's gonna wake up. Look how much Yetzirah is strong. To let so many people have that opportunity to do huge things in the world, and he doesn't let them. And who gonna be that next Nachshon ben Aminadav? The one that's gonna do it. The one that's gonna jump into the water. The one that's gonna jump. The one that's gonna fight. The one that's gonna do things that never been done before. No one had the merit to do those huge things. No one had that merit. Like we talked about Arav and we explained on Arav. Arav Shalom, he's the only one that until today had that merit to write such amazing books, so simple to understand and to hand them, to give them to thousands and uh, million, millions of copies already been given in the world. He had the spiritual merit to do that. And by who? By his students. Each and every one of us that gave those books have the merit of the distribution of Rav Shalom. If you hand 100 books to people, so you have that percent. If you gave 1,000, if you gave more and more and more and more, you have huge merits in your hands. And those merits are running in front of you, not behind you. They're not waiting for you in the world to come. They're bringing the Shefa, the spiritual bounty, into your life already today. That you understand more in the Torah, Kedusha, that your Tfilai with more heart, that your Ridbodidiyot are totally different. That people, you have most yata dishmaya, people are coming to you, asking you because of the merit of what that you've done. Those are the things that it's written on them, Tzidkato Omedet La'ad, that that kind of charity is standing forever. And you think, hey, what I'm going to do that I don't have that million? You can give one book. And if you're going to give that book, they're going to open for you to give a second book. And then you give the second. And mitzvah drags mitzvah and brings the second mitzvah. Before Moshe Rabbeinu was the shepherd of all of Am Israel, he was a shepherd of goats and deers. And the Kadosh Baruch Hu was checking him, how he was handling with them, how he was dealing with them. And when he saw that he was doing that with compassion, with love, the same with David HaMelech, that he's taking care of the weak ones, of his herd, he took him. He said he was a good shepherd, he can be the shepherd of my nation, of my people. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna see how you treat your wife, how you treat your children, how you treat your neighbors, how you're doing hafatzah with the money that you have in your pocket. What are you doing when you have 100 shekel with them? You buy another ice cream or that you buy two, three, four books to hand them to people. What you're doing? And then by that, according to that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is widening and opening for everyone. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu lo mekapeach schar b'yiribriya. He will not going to keep the reward for himself. He's not cheap. He's going to give you whatever that belongs to you, spiritually and physically. 
If you deserve to have money, you're going to have money. If you're going to deserve to, to have Chidushet Torah, you're going to have Chidushet Torah. You can write books. You don't know who you are. We need to work on that to believe in ourselves. Each and every one of us. What are we? What HaKadosh Baruch Hu is doing in His world to bring people together to one place, to let them all to want one thing and to pray on that thing. The Rav Kaduri said on Uman that people, thousands of people every year going to Rosh Hashanah. He said even before that we're talking about Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev. And even before that we're talking about what Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev is doing spiritually in Rosh Hashanah. Just the fact that thousands of people are coming all together, of Jews coming all together to one place to celebrate the Rosh Hashanah together, it's already huge. Already huge. Almost 40,000 people every year. 36,000, 38,000 from the wide world. Thousands on thousands of people. Everyone with his story, everyone from a different Hasidut, from a different part of Am Israel, from a different land. People from Russia, from Spain, from England, from United States, from, from, you can ever imagine, from France. You see people, thousands of them, and thousands and thousands from Eretz Israel, 21,000, 24,000. Going, everyone are going. What's going on in the world? And when you come over there to Uman, and you stand on the Tzion HaKadosh of Rabbeinu, and you start to do it by the dut, and you get crazy, you see what's going on. There is an engine under the ground over here that is lighting everyone. You see that you're praying, and you're praying, and you can do six hours, eight hours, ten hours, and you're crying to Hashem in Barach, and you say, another tikkun aklali, and another tikkun aklali. Not your powers. This is real humility, that you realize Everything that I'm succeeding in life is by the power of Moshe Rabbeinu, of the righteous man of the generation. Like that it's written on the war of Amalek. That Moshe Rabbeinu is standing on the mountain and he's praying. And he's praying. And by that power, Yoshua Binun, Cholesh Ba Amalek, he's got the power to conquer the Amalek. And with who Yoshua Binun is conquered? Moshe Rabbeinu told Yoshua Binun to watch early in the morning. For to who? From the people, the man is falling down close to their entrance of their tents. Means who's got confidence in Hashem Barach? Who's got faith in Hashem Barach? And take them, they're going to be your soldiers. Mean regular people that have faith in Hashem Barach, they are the soldiers of Yoshua Benun, of Moshe Rabbeinu. And when Moshe is lifting his hands, so they're conquered. They're overpowering on, Am Yisra, on, on, on Amalek. And when Moshe Rabbeinu is tired, what it means that Moshe Rabbeinu is tired? What it means that the hands of Moshe Rabbeinu is tired? Who is strengthening the power of Moshe? Aaron and Chur. Aaron and Chur. Again, students. Again, people that are close to the righteous man. They can have such a merit that they can support their rabbi. They can give the rabbi, the righteous man, power to do things that only he knows how to do. Aaron cannot stand like Moshe Rabbeinu. Chur can never stand like Moshe Rabbeinu. But Moshe Rabbeinu without Aaron and Chur also cannot do it. And Rav Belit Midim, There is no rabbi without students. If you're a loyal student, you have to do things for your rabbi. And if we see that our rabbi, so many days, he can be sick, he can be tired. And it's not about money. It's about prayers. It's about will. It's about to connect yourself to the right things in life. To bond yourself to righteous people in your Bodedut, in the Limuda Torah. That when you're learning, you're saying, I'm learning al Dat Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev. I don't know what am I saying. But when you're bonding yourself to the righteous people, they're dressing themselves in you. Means even if you're eating ice cream it, and you made it kashrut, means that now Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev is eating ice cream. As much as you believe, it depends on how much you believe, that really when you're bonding yourself to Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev, Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev is with you. If you're going to connect yourself now with that eating, and you're going to eat ice cream, if you believe that Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev is with you, Rabbi Nachman is going to eat that ice cream. And you don't know what Rabbi Nachman can do with ice cream. I'm telling you huge things he can do with ice cream. Huge things he can do with ice cream. It's a rebuke on Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, that Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, 
was eating only carobs and all of the world was depends in, in Parnassah from, on, on him. So the Gemara is rebuking him. Why you were eating only carobs? If you would eat more, HaKadosh Baruch Hu would bring more Shefa to the world. There were a lot of righteous people that lived in, 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 in wealth. Ashirut G'dolah. Like Rabbi, Rabbi Yudha Nasi and Moshe Rabbeinu and a lot of righteous people that had huge amounts of money. And by that they were bringing down the Shefa into this world. They were doing that in certain purpose, in certain intention. To bring the Shefa to all of Am Israel, they're bringing down the Shefa. Spiritual things. We need to connect ourselves to those righteous people and to believe in them and to believe that they're alive inside of ourselves, inside of us. Inside of us. And every person that is doing it, that is trying, like that we're saying, Ta'amur ukitov Hashem, taste, and then you're going to see that Hashem is good. Try that. Try to go to the field and to say, Rabbi Nachman, you're with me. Rabbi Nachman, you're with me. And pray and pray and pray. You're going to feel His presence. You're going to see that He's with you. You're going to see it in your life. You're going to see. And as much as you're going to be simple, you're going to see it more clearly. And if you think that now you're so far, you don't know how much you've been progressed until today. You cannot see your face. You cannot recognize. You cannot see your soul. But how much you've been changed from the first day that you came to the yeshiva? How much? And even if you came two weeks ago, you don't know which development you made. You don't know one, two, three, four, five, ten classes. You're a different person. The nish your neshama been changed. They switched your neshama already. Every class that you're coming, they're switching your soul. They give you a higher soul. Every class. People are telling me, we're coming to the class. In the end of the class, we don't know what to do. We want to run to the fields. It means you have a new soul. It means that you need to run, to open, to, 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 to release a little bit from, from the fire that you have inside of, it, inside of you. This is what the Rabbeinu said, My fire is going to light until Mashiach is going to come. In your hearts, in our hearts. How can it be that a person like me, that remember his life, is sitting now with you here in Beit Midrash and we're learning Torah together? What happened here? What happened? It's against all rules of nature. Just Ribbono Shel Olam saw my soul and he had mercy on me. And he said, I want that soul. I want that soul back. And he took me back from that deep exile that I was in. Like the Rav Shalom told me, I pulled you with my prayers and you fell into a, into a jar of honey. This is what had happened. He made it bodedut on Am Israel, took me out from all of my nonsense, and this is it. Bloop. Into a jar of honey. Bau Hashem. Great. Soft falling, sweet falling. Great one. Each and every one of us is the same story. Am Israel are being saved by a certain place that is serving Hashem Barach in Mesirut Nefesh. Every day people here are going and doing hafatzah, doing distribution, going and doing prayers on Am Israel. One hour on Am Israel, all of the yeshiva are doing one hour on Am Israel. And if you cannot do it every day, every week, one hour, so people are doing ten minutes every day. You think that those pr prayers are not bringing fruits? Why you came just to that yeshiva? Why you didn't come to a different yeshiva? Why in the end that book of Arab Shalom fell into your hands and you woke up? Why? Because the souls are connected. And from heaven they're opening your eyes to see from who you receive all of your bounty. From who you receive your shefa. I told you that I said to Arab once, I told him, Arab, I love you. So he told me, you're very lucky. <laughs> and I looked at him and he said, there are people that are breathing because of my merit, Bishruti, and they don't love me. What are you going to say? It can be, you don't know why you're breathing. You know that you had car accident and you, Baruch Hashem, you've been saved and you're saying, Baruch Hashem, every time you go there. But you don't know which merit saved you. You don't know. You were taking drugs. Every time that you took drugs, it wasn't 100% that you're going to come back from that place. And you did. You don't know which merit, which righteous person was fighting for you in heaven. You don't know nothing. 
But if life brought you to a certain place and woke you in, up in a certain path, in a certain way, so you need to put your dot to think on that. The dot khalze. To think. Maybe this place. Maybe that righteous man. Maybe Rabbi Nachon Nibreslev. So if now Rabbi Nachon Nibreslev done something so good for you and helped you, how can you pay back? Except of sharing that wisdom with other people. To let other people to enjoy that special light. To let people also have that gift of talking to Hashem Barach like you talk to your best friend. This is the biggest gift of them all. This is the biggest thing of them all. It bodedut hi ma'ala gdola ve'elyona mehakol. From everything. That you have someone to talk to and he's not taking money. It's crazy. Everyone should be brave on that. To share. To tell everyone that you know, hey, Hashem loves you. Hashem wants to hear your prayers. Hashem cares about you. Don't give up. Say, try another time. Say another word. Do another read bodedut. I'm also going to pray on you. And take his name. It's been told on Rabbi Yosef Voltoch that he was going to Rabbi Meir, Abu Chatzera, Baba Meir, and he was going to Baba Meir, and he was taking names from him, lists of names from him, and going with those names to the Kotel Amaravi and going and praying. What are you doing with your life? Now you see that our people need help. People need children. People need Parnasa. What are you doing with it? Make a list. Take that list. Go to the Kotel. Go to the field. In your Bodedut. Cry on those people. Ask on those people. Ask for them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna see. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna see what that you're doing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna be very proud of you that you're doing that with your free time. Without having free time. On the back of your own time. On your hit bodedut. That you're praying on other people. Everyone that is praying on his friends, he's been answered first. For sure you're going to be answered. For sure. And on top of that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu going to help you to grow and to develop spiritually and to succeed. And you're going to buy more merits to do more hafatsa and to bring more people closer to Hashem Midbarach. And endless numbers of, of, of students, each and every one, should have. Thank you, Rabbi Yisai. Chazak Baruch.